Hello, hello, hello. This is a continuation of section 6.4 from James Stewart's uh, Calculus Early Transcendentals book. And we are on the topic of work, which is an application of integration. And uh, we are going to talk about one application, which is um, the application of force and work is the stretching and compressing of a spring. All right, so we are going to go over uh, Hooke's law, and Hooke's law uh, says that the force of a spring varies directly with its position x, uh, namely that you know when you say something varies directly with something else, you say that that first something equals a constant times that other something, and so if the force of a spring varies directly with its position x, then we say f of x, which is our force function, is equal to k, a constant x, and k is known as the spring constant. And x really, if um, you consider a spring in its natural length, in other words, and the natural length of a spring is called its equilibrium position, and if it's not stretched or if it's not compressed, it's just sitting there, it's in its equilibrium position. And x is actually in the f of x equal to kx, this uh, formula right here is going to, uh, x here is going to be its stretch length. Right, the stretch length that is beyond its natural length, right, uh, distance beyond natural length. All right, so let's take a look at some of these um, questions here so that we can uh, address them and approach them in a logical and correct way. So here it says a force of 40 newtons is required to hold a spring with a natural length of one meter, uh, 0.25 meters away from its equilibrium position. So the natural length is one meter and 0.25 is the stretch length. All right, so in here, this is going to be my stretch length. All right, and it says, what is the spring constant K? So we're given that force is equal to 40 Newtons when X is equal to 0.25. Good, so we can apply our f of x equal to kx, and we will want to substitute 40 on the f of x side, and we'll want to substitute 0.25 on, uh, for x, and when we solve, we will get 40 Divide and 0.25 is one fourth, and so I'm going to say 40 divided by one fourth is equal to k, and we'll see that that is going to be four times 40 is 160, and so k here is going to be 160, and our force function is going to be 160x. Good. All right. Part B says how far will a force of 80 newtons stretch the spring? Well, now that we have our force function, we can figure out the value of x. So if I'm given that f of x is equal to 80, find x is basically what we're asked here. So we would use our f of x equal to 160x, and we're going to substitute 80 in here. Good. And now we're going to solve for x, and 80 divided by 160 is 1 half. Okay, what does part C ask for? How much work is it to stretch the spring 0.5 meters? beyond its natural length, okay? So in this instance, we do want to use calculus. And so let's say we've got um, the 
that the spring is holding on here and here we have our spring and its natural length is one meter. We're going to stretch it beyond its natural length, right? This is our stretch zone. Okay, and what we do is because uh, our f of x equal to kx, that is the force function, and we see that it does have variable x in it, so the force function is variable force. And when force is variable, we actually want to take incremental um, calculations of work. So we will, in the stretch zone, start dividing our stretch zone into equal partitions of delta x width, right? And all throughout that delta x, which is going to be super small when we take the limit as the number of partitions goes to infinity. But along that delta x slice, we can assume or approximate f of x to be constant along that. And so the idea is, is that we'll be calculating what is the work to stretch it this far, what is the work to stretch it then this far, what is the work to stretch it in this far, because in each increment, the force is going to change. But throughout that, and we know that work is force times distance. So we begin with delta force, our delta force is going to be 160x. We know that our delta work is going to be delta force times distance. And like I mentioned that we're just going to be moving a distance of delta x and then recalculating our force and moving again. And so we'll have 160x here and our uh, distance will be delta x. And then when we put together our work, our total work, that's going to be the integral of our delta work. And what are our limits of integration? If we establish that the natural length of our, um, of our spring is the zero position, then our stretch length is going to go from 0 to 0.5 because they're asking how much work is it to stretch the spring from 0.5. So we would say from 0 to 0.5 and we would have 0 to 0.5 of 160x dx. That's going to give us uh, 80 or 100, uh, 160x squared divided by 2, and 160 divided by 2 is 80x squared from 0 to 0.5, which is equal to 1 half. And so this is going to be 80 times 1 half squared, take away 0 squared. And that's going to be 80 divided by 4, which is going to be 20. And the units of measurement here is going to be Newton meters or joules. Good. All right. What does part D ask us? How much work is it to compress the spring 0.5 beyond its natural length? Okay, so uh, it will be the same particular setup. We can use the same um, spring picture, but in this case with zero here, we're actually going to be compressing, right? So we'll be compressing 0.5 meters, right? And we would want to do it from below. So we would still set up our same calculus. Our delta force is going to be 160x. Our delta work is going to be 160 times delta x because that's force times distance and it would be delta force times the distance and remember force is variable so we want to go a small distance delta x distance each time and then recalculate a new delta work uh, approximation and then add up all of our delta works and that's how we form the integral so our total work is going to be the integral of the delta work 
And in this case, we're going from equilibrium back. We're compressing, so we're going to point negative 0.5. And again, when we calculate that, we end up with 160 x dx. We still get 80 x squared. We're going from 0 to uh, minus 0 0.5, and that's going to give us 80 times minus 0 0.5 squared minus 0 squared, and that's still going to give us 20 joules, or 20 j. Okay, so let's take a look at one more spring problem. And here this is a big one for uh, the big engineers in the group. <laughs> here it is. It takes uh, 21,714 pounds of force to compress a coil spring assembly vertically on a New York City Transit Authority subway car from its free height of 8 inches to its fully compressed height of 5 inches. How much work is done? Right. We want to use that is done. When a force of 15,000 pounds is applied. So this type of question I tend to uh, liken to the exponential growth and decay. Sometimes you're given a fact about your growth and decay. Um, and then you set up your model with the number the number of like atoms in the Petri dish is equal to the original amount times e to the a t and your a is your growth constant well here k is our spring constant and we're given some facts we are given that it takes uh, 21,700 pounds of force and if we remember our units of measurement uh, of force this is force in pounds uh, and it's going to compress the coil vertically on a New York from its free height of eight inches to its compressed height of five inches. So eight minus five is gonna be three inches, and that's going to be its compression slash uh, uh, length, or compression length. So we're going to use that together with Hooke's Law, and Hooke's Law, remember, is f of x equal to kx, and the compression length is three inches, and the force was 21,740, uh, 714 pounds. And so we can plug in on the force side, 21,714, and on the K side with X, we'll plug in three. Good. And then we will want to solve for our K, and our K is going to be 21,714 divided by 3, and um, we can multiply or divide or actually just still use that as f of x equal to 21,714 over 3 times x, and that is our force function. Good? Um, it says how much work is done when a force of 15,000 pounds is applied. So if I use my force function and I put 15,000 on the force side, because that is our pounds, and I want to solve for x, x is going to give me my stretch length. Good. So this is going to be, uh, if I multiply by 3 on both sides, I'll get 45,000, and then I'm going to divide by 21,714, and that is going to give me my x, and if I do 45,000 and I divide by that, 21,714, I will get approximately 2.07 as my compression in the inches. Why do I want that? Because they're actually asking um, how much work when a force of 15,000 pounds is applied. Okay, so here I'm just going to draw a picture. Here's my big AC transit or spring, and I know that it's got a natural length of 8. 
and I'm going to compress it to uh, 2.7 inches, right? Good. And um, that means, and if I use my natural length as my zero, I'm actually going to, with my compression, and this is going up is positive down, this is gonna be minus 2.07 inches. I wanna say that my delta force is going to be the um, 2.21714 divided by 3x. My delta work is going to be 21,714 divided by 3x times delta x. Remember, with variable force, my delta x is my distance. And then I want to say that my work is going to be the integral of my delta work. But we're going to go from 0 to minus 2.07. And so we end up with... Um, the integral from 0 to minus 2.07 of and 21,714 divided by 3 ends up being 7,238 uh, x dx. And when I um, integrate that, I'm going to have it be 7,238 x squared divided by 2. And that's going to give me 3,619 x squared, and I'm going from 0 to minus 2.07. And so my total work is going to be 3,619 times minus 2.07 squared, take away 0 squared. And that's going to give me how many? 15,000. 507 uh, and the units of measurement here we've got inches and we have pounds so we want to say it is inch pounds good all right so it is important with your you know the work uh, involved in stretching or compressing springs Remember your Hooke's Law, f of x equal to k times x. Sometimes you're given a fact, and the first order of business is to actually find your spring constant. And that is exactly what we did first with our 21,714 pounds to compress it by 3 inches. And remember that that x is the stretch or compression length. And so once we get our force function, um, our, uh, our delta work expression is going to be our force our kx delta x and so the hard part sometimes is finding our limits of integration uh, from its natural length just put the zero at its natural length and then go to its stretch or compression length sometimes if they're telling you okay the natural length is eight inches how much work does it take to stretch it from 12 inches to 15 inches your 12 and 15 are going to give you a position and you're going to want to subtract your original amount if you want to make the, the uh, natural length the zero, right? Because it would really be uh, if I went from 12, if your natural length was 8 inches and I said, what's the work in stretching from 12 to 15 inches? The stretch length here is 4 inches to what's 15 minus 8 is 7 inches. That's going to be our stretch length. And your stretch length is going to be your limits of integration, right? Your limits of integration are your stretch lengths or compression lengths, so just keep that in mind. All right, that does it for work involving springs. And the next partition or the next video is going to be on pumping fluids out over tanks or uh, draining pools and stuff. See you in a bit.